a computer programmed reality and the only clue we have to it is when some variable is changed and some alteration in our reality occurs. It's easy for me to imagine that everything in our lives is just the creation of some other entity for their entertainment. It is easy for me to think that. Well, maybe we're in a simulation right now. Yeah. <laughs> simulated universe, a computer generated reality. And there's another possibility that if you have a simulated civilization, that that simulated civilization might inside the simulation develop the technology to run its own simulations. And you might then have a kind of nested simulation, with simulation inside the simulation might have many levels of simulation. crazy that the first Matrix movie came out almost 18 years ago now. It's kind of hard to believe. I confess, when those movies first came out, I thought they were pretty amazing. But what's amazing to me now is to realize just how impactful those movies, and then of course a whole host of other movies that followed, were in the sense of that they, they introduced the mass public to the idea of simulation theory, and packaged it in a way that was easily you know, digestible, and it laid a lot of conceptual groundwork for so much that would follow in, not just in science fiction, but in both alleged science fact. Once you had this sort of foundational un understanding that was established within the cultural zeitgeist. You know, of course, in the, the truth movement, in the, the decade and a half since 9-11, and in the increasing number of people who've uh, woken up you know, largely due to the internet, the Matrix has, has always kind of served as this, like, metaphorical touchstone for, you know, the whole notion of taking the red pill and waking up to, a, a like, a, a dystopian reality, you know, and the, the idea of everyone living within a fabricated illusion and this oppressive control system and everything else. But now, as more and more of us are increasingly questioning the claims of mainstream scientism with all these other things like evolution, and Copernican cosmology, and, you know, NASA's alleged accomplishments, and gravitational theory, and relativity, and et cetera, et cetera, you know, the more interesting it has really become to me to now step back and just start recognizing how, how heavily the leading figures of quote-unquote real science are really pushing the concept of simulation theory and preaching that this concept of programmable reality is what all of our research and knowledge in the fields of quantum physics and string theory and so on are all pointing us towards. I mean, they, they really aren't even being coy about it at this point. They're just literally coming out and saying point blank that we do live in the matrix. You find computer code writ 
in the fabric of the cosmos. And so those movies by the Wachowskis, and then many others now, they've absolutely become a, a key teaching tool for these PhD prophets of what we should probably just start referring to as the quantum religion. You know, and I don't really know how else to look at it now, because that's just that's just what it is. This quantum religion or quantism or whatever we want to call it is it's absolutely nothing less than a repackaging of all the ancient mystery school doctrines just with new terminology and with you know a highly manipulated history of how these supposedly scientific theories and discoveries progressed uh, through the generations the more i study all of this the more I continually come to the conclusion that so much of what is being claimed and emphasized through the halls of academia and so-called science today it is in fact derived from ancient occult teachings through a sort of centuries-long cross-pollination of different systems such as Kabbalism, alchemy, and hermeticism. And so for me, it's, it's really kind of concerning when I see that a number of people out there who are, who are exploring Flat Earth and alternative cosmologies and such, they start considering and then incorporating various elements of simulation theory into some kind of enclosed cosmology. Uh, most of the times it seems because they get caught up, you know, wanting to figure out the map and the model and all the specifics, and then, of course, they start running into all the same questions and complications with things like the stars or the southern flights or you know, maybe they get into the whole pac-man model idea you know and find that compelling with the, the flat globe or you know whatever else and so basically what is so ironic is that effectively what they end up doing is rejecting the masonic luciferian lies about the globe and space and all of that but then they just turn around and embrace a different layer of lies from the same masonic luciferian source And another crazy thing is that when we look at so many examples coming out of the Hollywood propaganda machine that's, you know, pushing simulation theory hardcore, we see that they're not only just admitting that there's this connection between quantum theory and mysticism now, but they actually seem to be celebrating it at this point and intentionally presenting this connection as something that should be understood by the majority of people. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. What truth? There is no spoon. There is no spoon? And so for me, this is really kind of the whole point. One of the real underlying reasons why I see so much of the deceptions of scientism and their and their occult roots you know as having very serious and destructive ramifications both now and in the days ahead because ultimately the whole point of believing that you live in a matrix that we live in this programmable quantum reality it has to do with the logical assumption that follows which says that if we live in a matrix we can eventually then eventually advance in our understanding of the universe to the point where we could learn how to start programming it for ourselves, right? To rewrite the code as we see fit. And that, in a nutshell, is the Luciferian dream. I mean, that is the essence of magical thinking. This is the mentality of witchcraft. This is the core mindset of hermetic philosophy. I came across this description of hermeticism the other day, which I thought was incredibly telling. It says, Although there is a link between celestial and terrestrial realms in hermeticism, the as above, so below maxim, there is the central idea of progress of knowledge and advancement in learning. In the hermetic tradition, nature is investigated through observation, experimentation, and illumination. 
The purpose is to discover and detect that which is invisible and find the hidden linkages between things. The magical tradition within Hermeticism endeavors to discover the influence of one thing over another, to understand phenomena and how to manipulate them. <laughs> and that, that right there is what the entire cult of scientism is ultimately preaching. That through our advancement in technology and understanding of the laws of the universe, through our evolution as a species, we can eventually become all-knowing, all-powerful, and become immortal. So these concepts of metaphysical mastery and you know psychic power, which we see constantly being portrayed and glamorized in movies and TV and video games through whether it's science fiction or fantasy or superheroes or, you know, so much more. These are all absolutely representations of the very thing that the book of Revelation prophesied about long ago. And they are descriptions of the attributes of a coming one world leader, a false messiah, the Antichrist. The Bible tells us that the whole world will marvel and say, Who is like the beast? Who can make war with him? And the vast majority of mankind at that time will take his mark and give their eternal allegiance to him, because they believe that he's mastered the secrets of the universe. They will worship a, quote, God of forces, who I believe is really just Lucifer, the ancient serpent or the dragon. My friends, we are today engulfed by the lies of this Antichrist spirit. We are surrounded by the false doctrines of demons, which make all kinds of empty promises about achieving godhood through secret knowledge, uh, without the need for repentance, without the need for Christ's shed blood. But please, fear not, because the false prophet, the beast, and the dragon will be overcome by the Lord himself as he returns in full power and glory. Do not be disheartened by this exponential increase in wicked delusion and idolatry. Do not grow faint because the powers of darkness appear to be growing stronger, even though in the end all they really have is parlor tricks. And do not succumb to these deceptions, to the vast array of alluring lies of Luciferian occultism, masquerading themselves as science. Instead, look to the Lamb who sits on the throne, the one whose voice the very wind and the waves obey, the one whose name the very rocks will cry out and praise if no one else will. He is your refuge. He is our strength in our salvation.